Hi guys and welcome to episode 12 of the Books, Hooks and Yarn Knitting Podcast. I've got a few new people here at the moment so welcome and thank you to those that have come back again to listen to my chattiness and general babble about knitting. I'm Crystal, I love to knit, I sometimes crochet, I sometimes sew, I'll be very badly. Um, I also like to share what I've been reading and what I've been up to and just life in general I guess sometimes. Um, welcome! It is Tuesday the 13th of April which I know means it has been way longer than two weeks since my last podcast but I started full-time work and life got a bit crazy and hectic we went away camping and whatnot I'll talk about that later but for now I have my nice hot cup of tea because the weather here is horrific it's supposed to be autumn and it feels like we have just gone straight from summer into winter no in-betweens no further stops it's just the express train to winter so I've got a nice hot cup of tea now I can have a chat with you guys about what I've been up to first things first I have a finished object, a wearable finished object. Uh, this is my take on the Sock Head Cow by Kelly McClure. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. There is a matching loose fitting like beanie. Uh, this is it. Ah, it is so warm. I haven't blocked it yet or washed it because I finished it not last night and night before and I just wanted to wear it straight away because the weather is just sh so shocking I thought I'll get some use out of it before we get like that one random hot day that'll probably put me off wearing it for a while. I love it. So I say it's my take on the Suckhead Cow because I did a different type of ribbing and I changed a few things on it. So um, I did a 4x4 four four ribbing instead of the, I think it was supposed to be 2x2. Two and there was supposed to be like a good 15 centimeters or something like that of two by two ribbing. I wasn't doing that. No way. I did 15 rounds of four by four ribbing. Close enough, right? Uh, and then I did a hundred rounds of stockinette. Look at that. I'm so happy with how beautiful and even that turned out before I even blocked it. And then I did another 15 rounds of four by four ribbing. And then I tried to do a new bind off that I've never done before. Uh, I don't know why I didn't just check the pattern and see what bind off that was supposed to be, but I got it into my head that I was supposed to do a stretchy bind off. So I did a stretchy bind off. I just Googled a stretchy bind off and I tried a new one. I do like the beautiful, it kind of looks like a braid to me, the edging that it's given it. It's kind of hard to show just that. But um, yeah, I quite like it. It's a bit more interesting than my cast on, but it's not as neat, I guess, as my cast on edge. Um, either way, I still need to block it. So what I'll do is I won't aggressively block this end because it does look a bit wider than this one. And I might just give this one a bit more of a stretch when I block it. Which means I have to use my blocking mats for the first time ever, which is exciting. Um, so yes, that's my cow. I'm going to put it back on because it is freezing. And I'm trying to make use of this stuff rather than put the heater on all the time. Um, yeah, it sits beautifully. I'm glad I stopped when I did because I decided I hit about 70 rounds. I thought oh, I might just get to 100 and then do the ribbing because... I was worried it was going to be too much bulk between my chin and my chest and I didn't want it to be like if there's too much going on around my neck I feel constricted and like I'm going to be strangled so I just wanted something not too bulky and that worked out perfectly. Alright so yarn. I used a fingering yarn and a mohair yarn held double. I have talked about this before but just one more time since it's finally finished. I used a beautiful um, sock yarn from Stitchcraft and Wizardry called I'd Forget My Own Head If I Wasn't Attached To It. It's the Jemima Puddle Duck Cutaway from their Peter Rabbit collection on their House Elf Liberty base. So it's just beautiful. It's got soft blues and pinks and whatnot through it. Um, and then I held that double with a mohair called Candy Fluff from Obsession Yarns. Um, 
because I just figured this was basically a dark version of this with the blues, purples and pinks. So it worked out beautifully and together they made this beautiful bundle of fluff. Sorry, you probably can't hear me when I do that. So yeah, I absolutely love it and I'm probably going to live in it all winter. That is my only finished object, but I'm super proud I did that because it's been my biggest, longest running whip at the moment. So over and done with. And I actually really enjoyed the knitting process. It was nice to be able to pick that up and just knit on it, especially at work. It was really easy and it was so beautiful. People always ask me what I was making and I wanted to touch it. I really should wash this because a lot of people have touched it. Okay, I guess we must be on to the millions of whips that are behind me. I should add, I have 25 grams left of this and 14 grams left of this. So that's what I've got left over. I'll probably keep this for heels and toes of a pair of socks. And I'm thinking there might be enough here for a beanie or a pair of fingerless mitts. Probably a pair of fingerless mitts, actually to um or oh, I could use them both maybe I'm not sure I'll figure out something to do with it it won't be wasted I know that much all right I have three things that I'm actively working on at the moment um Alexandra from Five Bound or Ali is running a knit along at the moment we're calling it the whip down knit along 2021 that's the hashtag on Instagram. Um, so I chose my four whips that I wanted to focus on for that. And that was this. So I finished that. And I've got three others that I'm actively working on. I want to get finished for that knit along. Um, one of them probably won't get finished because it is quite long. But it's encouraging me to knit on it more than what I have been recently. All right. So I finally did a very shoddy job <laughs> of fixing my Harry Potter bag. So... Um, I just hand stitched it because I honestly couldn't be bothered to pull out the sewing machine for just this tiny little bit here. But I also changed the drawstring to t-shirt yarn because I went to a shop and bought a bag and it, they used t-shirt yarn for theirs. And I thought that's a brilliant idea because the drawstring I had was actually quite bulky for my, yeah, it was just a bad choice. All right, first whip. My husband's green socks. I know, I know. I've been camping. These should be done. But... I didn't knit much while we were camping so they're still in the whip pile um but i am currently doing the heel flap and then once i actually just sit down and smash that out which will be this week i can knit the foot i am still a little bit concerned they'll be too big but once i've done the heel and the heel turn and all that stuff and i've knit most of the foot i'll be able to slide them on him try them on and i'll know whether or not I'm wasting my time and energy right now and I'll have to rip it all back or if it will be fine. Hopefully it'll be fine. He doesn't like loose socks though. Um, he informed me on our way up to camping when I was like, oh, you'll be fine. They just might be looser than your other pair. Oh, I don't like loose socks, honey. Well, right. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks for that info. <laughs> um, but yeah, they are still looking very, very pretty. I um, was just knitting and knitting and knitting on the leg. I've done, I've been marking every 10 rounds, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 rounds on the leg, which, no, 45, sorry, which was not intentional. I was supposed to do 30, considering I did a 20 round ripped cuff. So yeah, that's on my dyed Bendigo Woolen Mills undyed sock yarn that I dyed myself with food dye. Um, knitting up very pretty. The blue socks ended up going to my mother-in-law, by the way. They were a bit too small for me. Uh, she tried them on and they fit perfectly, apparently. So I left them for her when we went camping. She came to feed the cat. I was like, hey, that's a pair of blue socks there. Try them on. If they fit, they're yours. And she sent me a message straight away going, they're perfect. I'm like, well, now they have a home. And I can look back at my notes now and know what I have to do to make socks for her again. So that's whip number one. That's still the first sock, by the way, guys. I, uh, yeah, I. Working is really eating into my hobby time. I tell you, so rude. 
All right, whip number two is in a new bag, which I actually got the day we left for camping. Uh, I'm just using it to hold my socks. All right, this is uh, another pair of socks for me. I started this, um, I, I don't even know why I started this. I think I just started it because I had cast on itis. Um, and I worked on this more than my husband's socks at camping because I was like, oh, I have to do the heel flap and gusset and everything. Um, just kind of want something I can knit and stockinette or ribbing. So that's what I did. I finished the ribbing on the way up there and then I was just doing some stockinette knitting whenever I did feel like doing something. So, yeah, I've got a pretty little pink stitch marker on there from Obsession Yarns. Um, it was part of her ballerina set that I got for my daughter and I just kind of pilfered it. The yarn is Meet Me at Central Perk by Stitchcraft and Wizardry. It's a Friends colorway. I love Friends. Don't particularly like all the characters in Friends, but that's another story. So that's whip number two. So that's two lots of socks that I've got going on. Zipping that up. And whip number three. Yet another pretty new bag. Hair made by Aunt Donna. I love it. Oh, it's just, I love it so much. Okay, and here I have my grain shawl by Tin Can Knits. Sorry, I'm very aggressive about this shawl because I feel like I've also been knitting it forever. And I've made little to no progress on it. Um, but I knitted it today while I was at the hairdressers. I was knitting it the last few nights. I, uh, once I finished this, I started straight away on this. Um, so this is where I'm up to. So the spider, which is from Obsession Yarns, by the way, because... Of course it is. Let's see if I can get there. Yeah, there we go. Uh, very pretty and sparkly. Uh, that's where I was up to last episode. So I've actually done quite a bit considering every second row I'm increasing by four, which makes, you know, every second row longer than the previous one. So it takes me a little bit longer to knit. Um, yeah, only a mistake I've got so far, and I don't know how this happened. I'm thinking it was a drop stitch and I picked it back up the wrong way. This side fine. And then this side, there is one pearl stitch right there. But that's fine. It just means it won't be haunted. Um, so, yeah, I am loving working on this. I um, don't need to take the pattern with me anywhere. I've got all these stitch markers in here, and I know that on my increase rounds, I just have to yarn over. before that, uh, After that stitch marker, before this one, after this one, and before that one and then the other side I just knit so that's why I put the spider on there not just for a progress keeper but also so I know which is the right side so this is my right side that's my wrong side so yeah although I'm thinking when it's all finished it won't matter which is which I should be able to wear it anyway but I do need to know the right and wrong side while I'm knitting it so I know which side to add stitches to so yeah I am knitting that on some beautiful yarn from Dragonfly Yarn from Miss Melody. Uh, this one is called, I was about to say Empathy. And I think that's what it is, but if not, I'll pop it down the bottom here. So yeah, it's a beautiful purpley, mm, I, I call this, it's a, it's a natural colour for me, like it's got, it goes with anything, thank goodness, because these are the minis I'm using to strap towards the end. So yeah, that goes perfectly and Melody actually helped me pick that. Melody is actually operating back on Etsy now. I'll pop her Etsy store address down here. Um, so if you are looking to buy any of her yarn, that's where you will find her. All right, I've got such a shambles in here because I have nowhere else to do this right now. Um, I couldn't even have us like facing the bed like I normally do because my husband is sick so our bed is split in half like I've got one side here with a flamingo doona and he's got the other side there with the sick man's brown doona because I refuse to share a blanket with him because I'm like quarantining from him in the bed because he's got some sort of virus and I just don't feel like dealing with that because um I don't want to get sick either right before I'm home with the kids by myself for school holidays Sorry, guys, that was my sister trying to call. Um, yeah, I don't want to get sick right before the end of the holidays because I really don't want to have to worry about going to work with primary school children while I'm sick. Like, that's not fair. Um, 
he's okay. He's just very germy and it's just not something I wish to contract. So, yeah. Um, I guess I must be up to pretty new things. I feel like I'm flying through today and it's probably not the case whatsoever. I have quite a bit to show. I know I did a little video on Insta the other day after I had been to a yarn store, but I have a few things to show actually. Um, I ordered a bunch of things for wool swap because I am lucky enough to actually be pa paired with Gail, who actually runs the wool swap this time around. Um, and we both decided we were going to do a little bit more than a usual one. We're doing like 400 grams of yarn to each other plus whatever extras we wanted to throw in. Um, and while I was ordering stuff for Gail, I decided I would order some things for myself as well because why not? If I'm paying for postage, I might as well make the most of it. Uh, so I obviously can't show you the things I got for Gail, but I can show you the things I ordered for myself. So I ordered, she told me to order from local to me, indie dyers and like dyers that I really like and so I ordered from um Dragonfly Yarn Dye, Skip Rope Yarn Co, Obsession Yarns and then is that all I did for ordering online I think I think that's all the online ordering I did but this is what I got for myself from Dragonfly Yarn this is Shell and it's a beautiful 75-25 sock yarn. I just, it's so soft. I have no plans for this. It, I'm a bit concerned about wearing light colours for socks. Because I have small children and my floors aren't pristine. Um, I would love to say that I clean them more frequently. But I do sweep and vacuum every day. I just don't mop constantly um so I don't really want to make these into socks there's a very good chance this will become a shawl or I don't know what else maybe another cow because my family have decided these are amazing and we want one for every day of winter basically um so yeah that's a beautiful just a nice pink I don't have much pink I if I do have pink in my stash it's normally a brighter pink but I thought I should start collecting more nudes and naturals and um more semi-solids or tonals as opposed to i've got a lot of speckled yarn so that was that one from oh my gosh i can't i don't have much to show from obsession yarns because a lot of it went into packages uh but marie had a little bit of a sale on so i grabbed quite a few things so i already showed you my spider that was on my shawl, but that came with um, a beautiful gold progress keeper with it. Um, that came with, oh gosh, I can never do this clever thing that people do with their hands. Um, I am not going to tell you guys how much editing there is in my videos when I'm trying to do this. So there we go. That's as good as it's going to get. There's a little gold one that came with the spider. And my eldest daughter loves dinosaurs. So I had to get her these because, um, well, just because. I like to be reminded of the people I love when I'm knitting. So there's three little dinosaurs on there. There's a one with a long neck, a little T-Rex and a Stegosaurus, which my sister, my sister, my daughter was absolutely wrapped about. So they're very cute. I love them. She loves them. Kept trying to run off with them. Uh, and then I got these on sale as well. There we go. That's Miss Marie. She just does the most beautiful things. And here's the yarn that I got. So her mohair was on sale, so I had to grab that. So this one's Embrace, which is like lighter blues and pink. The pink's still quite bright, actually. So I know the lighting's not great in here today because I've got, it's overcast and I'm in my bedroom with just bedroom lighting. So there's that one. And then I also got Ariella. 
which is more purples and there's a little bit of blue in there as well um so these are 75 percent kid mohair 25 percent mulberry silk and you get 420 meters to 50 grams you get so much meterage with these things it's amazing i could not believe it all right marie sent me a bunch of well, not a bunch but like i think i did two separate orders um and i got free stitch markers and tea bags and she also sent me some free minis this one is 100% merino and let me tell you marie's got the right idea because i want this in 100 grams or 200 grams uh yeah she's definitely got the right idea sending these free minis because now i just want to order this from her and then there's also this one which is also 100% australian merino it's called garden poetry and it's all greens which is absolutely beautiful and i'm not sure what i will use them for um but i probably will use them when i order the big skeins <laughs> all right so that's from obsession yarns i ordered a bunch of stuff from skip rope yanko but i cannot show it only thing i can show is the mohair that i ordered because apparently i'm obsessed with mohair um so this one is called true teal it's the super kid silk 75 percent super kid mohair 25 percent mulberry silk look at that look at that halo it's so fuzzy oh i'm in love i just and the color is just perfection i love it so much so that's from skip rope yanko that's from cass and she also sent a free mini this one is um, a 20 gram mini sample of their So Twisted Sock Base, which is 100% Superwash High Twist Merino. And it's just a beautiful greeny color, which I love. Um, that's probably going to be heels and toes or even just cuffs or something for a pair of socks. Um, hmm. Cass also sent me a beautiful note um saying she wished that i had hoped that i had a good week at my new job and with some relaxation tea which is definitely needed so thank you very much cass and marie for all the beautiful love you put into your packages because it really does mean a lot and when i open them you can hear my squeals of joy from the next street over because i just i feel how much care you put into your packages that you send to your customers and just thank you all right and then last but not least i made a trip to little woolly makes sorry i keep reaching back here that's where i have to put everything to little woolly makes in hastings finally finally got there decided while hubby was on annual leave i was finally going to go there and now i want to live there i want to move in I wonder if julie would mind if i just like live in a storeroom or something surely she wouldn't mind I don't know. All right. I got a cute little bag with dogs on it. Because, yep. It's the only dogs in my life at the moment. Uh, and this is where I got the idea for the t-shirt yarn for the drawstring. Which is much better than mine. But still, it's such a good idea. Um, where do I even start? Okay, so. I tested out some Knit Pro Symphony soft needles while I was there. So I grabbed some 2.5s. And the reason I decided to grab another pair of stockings is because I have misplaced one of my 2.5 ones. I cannot find them anywhere. And I decided to buy a sock yarn while I was there. So I had to buy sock needles. So I have one by Little Woolly Manx, which is Julie's yarn. So that's that one there. It is called Posy. Here we go. That's it. I just love it. Look at that. So that's the usual. Oh, this is an 85-15. So 85 percent super, superwash merino, 15% nylon, 400 meters to 100 grams. And then to go with the bits of blue and stuff in there, because I want to try my first ever pair of socks with a true afterthought heel, where I measure where I want my heel to go. Like I'll put a stitch marker or something into the round that I want my heel to go into and then when I've finished the whole sock and done the toes I'm going to cut it and pick up those stitches and put my heel in and I think I'm going to pay for the fish lips kiss heel and attempt that 
oh, it'll be exciting. I can't wait. So I ended up getting a mini from Ren and Ollie for my heels. It's called Seven Seas. There is 20 grams and I get 80 meters. Um, and it is the same 85, 15. So 85% superwash merino, 15% nylon. I've got this beautiful blue color to go with the blues in the little woolly makes yarn. So I've got all those ready to go in my little doggy bag. I'm going to try and get as many whips done before I cast this on. It's not going to happen. I'm going to cast this on before I go back to work because that's just how I operate. So that's that. And then I decided to get my husband. This was supposed to be socks as well from Ren and Ollie. So this one's night out. It's just a beautiful gray. And this one is Poison Ivy, which is the greens and greys that I thought I would use for his heels as well. Um, but since wearing, since I finished this, my husband decided to put it on. He was wearing it for about an hour just around the house and he loved it. He doesn't want the mohair though. He just wants a cowl and finger yarn. So um, he kind of hinted that he would like me to do that with this. So I think that's what I'll be doing. So I'll just put this aside. I might grab another one of these next time I go and I will make his socks from that. And then I've got a friend at work who's having a baby and her favorite colors are purples and teals. So I was looking around. Last time I made baby stuff, I made them out of cotton, not knowing it was cotton. Uh, not really knowing that it was the thing. It was very early on in my knitting journey. So, but it was so soft and so beautiful and so my friend said her, it was perfect for her baby and washed up really well. So I grabbed some more cotton. So this is just the Cascade Ultra Pima. Pima, I'm not sure. Uh, and it's 100 grams of 100% Pima or Pima cotton. And that's it. So I got that. And I'm actually keeping that in my Yarny Wombat project bag because I have these three yarns that I got when I was doing the knit the knitting subscription I was doing it wasn't knit crate it was um an Australian one um and I decided I didn't want to do it anymore because they sent me acrylic which sounds so much like I'm a yarn snob but the whole point of the one that I was doing was that it was eco-friendly and I don't see how acrylic is eco-friendly but they sent me these and it's a baby supremo that was in my first box and i think they would be the perfect thing to make a cute little assortment of um what are they called booties <laughs> booties and mittens and things like that so i will do that for my friend um i originally thought she was having a late spring early summer baby but it turns out she's having a late winter early spring baby so i will make sure she's got some snuggly goodness in there <sighs> i have such a long segment of things that i've bought lately and it's not because i've bought a lot per se uh it's because um it's been so long since since the last podcast and a lot of stuff arrived while i was camping so it feels like i have a lot to show you and then i went to a yarn store and i also did some more online shopping because I can. I decided I would try out Nundle Woolen Mills because I have bought my undyed yarn from Bendigo Woolen Mills pretty religiously since I started doing my own at home dyeing. And then I was going to try Wangaratta Woolen Mills, but all of their sock yarn cones were on like back order or pre order or whatever. And I really wanted to get a cone, not a hank. So I now have 400 grams. Of Nundle Woolen Mills undyed sock yarn. So, yeah, I think I'll be going on next weekend. We have with a bit of warmish weather. I'll be able to go on a bit of a dyeing spree. I wanted to buy it in the cone because I wanted to be able to do some 20, 25 gram minis as well, not just 100 gram hanks. And I suppose I could have bought the 100 gram hanks and then like split them into four or five. But um, this seemed a bit easier, in all honesty. Um, although the hanks are, you know, pre-measured and everything, I guess that this is, it was 40 bucks for the cone. So I do feel like it was a little bit cheaper. So yeah, 
I can do that myself. And I thought I always buy sock yarn, so try something a bit thicker. So I also got their 12 ply. I'm not sure why I haven't done this previously because 12 ply is so beautiful to make beanies out of. Um, so I thought I will give that a go. I can dye up the yarn that I need for my own beanies. And just because I love all things glittery, sorry for the rustling, I also decided, I haven't opened this one yet, to give their glitter one a go. Oh, this is a giant hank. This is 200 grams of a glittery undyed. I don't know if you're going to see the glitter in there. It's showing up really well in front of my eyes. But it's a silver glitter, not a gold one. So that might be... Oh, oh we've got a little sparkle there. Yeah, there's a silver glitter in there. Which I'm very excited about. I don't know what I'm going to use it for. Probably a shawl, because what else do you need things for things that are glittery? It'll be a shawl or a cow, or I might attempt to make a beanie in... <sighs> fingering yarn. I feel like... It would take forever. But yes, gigantic, messy hank of glittery undyed yarn. That is all of my new things. Finally. Well, it's all the new things I could find in my house anyway because it's absolutely trash since we got back from camping. So what's been happening? What have I been reading? What have I been watching? What have I been doing? We just got back from camping. Uh, not just, we got back last week. We were supposed to be there for a couple of days longer than what we were, but our camping fridge, like my husband's car, has a fridge on like sliders in the back of his car. It sounds really high tech, but it's just a, like a fridge <laughs> and it runs off a battery. I don't know. It's just to help keep like a meat and stuff cold. Um, it dumped all its gas and wasn't keeping things cold like the two or three days before we're supposed to leave so we kind of left the next day which is fine um so yeah it was a good camping trip but my daughters were at each other's throats the whole time it was hard to, i say it was hard to relax but same time i read two and a half books while we were camping almost three um so clearly i had enough relaxation time to be able to do that um i think the worst part was waking up at 5 30 in the morning after daylight saving ended and i um little interruption from my bed um yeah the worst part was getting up at 5 30 in the morning after daylight saving ended to take my daughter to the toilet in the dark and the freezing cold because it was like four or five degrees first thing in the morning um but thankfully coming home early meant that we missed all that horrific weather that was happening oh sorry guys toto what are you doing they're dog sitting my in-laws dog at the moment toto come here come here come on come on come here all right come here oh you're such a big wolf oh here he is there we go say hi oh thank you i love your kisses too i love your kisses too oh yes thank you. oh oh your breath stinks just say hi. No, not to me. Look over here. Oh. Why in the mouth, dude? Gross. Ugh. Okay. Uh, what did I read while we were camping? Alright. I got most of the way through the secret garden again. I decided to take a reread just in case I um needed something I didn't have to fully concentrate on. You're noisy. So that was my, I don't really have to concentrate on it, read. Um, I got a book for Christmas from my daughter because she picked it because it was pink and had a bird on it. Uh, Boy Swallows Universe by Trent Dalton. And it was phenomenal. All these badges and awards and whatnot on there. Yeah, they 100% there should be more on there because it was one of the best Australian books I have ever read. I can't even, I could tell you what it's about. But I couldn't tell you what it's about without ruining it. So, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Amazing. Highly recommend. Um, trigger warning, I guess, for anyone that's grown up in a family with um, that's been drug affected. That's probably my only not like negative or anything because it was a really integral part of the story but 
yeah that is a strong theme in the book um and this one i actually got when my friend decluttered her books and i rated them white is for witching by helen oyoyemi oyoyemi not sure sorry if i pronounce that incorrectly it is oh, it's about a girl who suffers from pica and she has a twin brother and they live in this house and that's about as far as i can go without also ruining the story amazingly written i just oh, it is so good and it i love books that have an ending that are ambiguous i don't want to always know concretely what happens um but they give you enough clues that you can make solid um guesses as opposed to like the handmaid's tale a handmaid's tale which ended and i was like well what happened i don't know i have no closure here whatsoever so yeah highly recommend that one as well if you can find it absolutely amazing uh helen oyoyemi or yemi sorry was born in Nigeria in 1984 and moved to London when she was four. She is the author of the highly acclaimed novels The Icarus Girl and The Opposite House and two plays, Juniper's Whitening and Victimese. So, yes, very amazing read. I absolutely loved it. Um, I am currently reading, again, Stepsister, which is about the stepsister Isabel and her story. Um, it's not your typical... Cinderella story it's gory and violent and full-on and I love it that's why I'm rereading it again it's just divine uh this is by Jennifer Donnelly yeah the New York Times best-selling author um oh, yeah I loved it um what else has been going on in life we're obviously on school holidays I go back to work next week um cannot wait but at the same time I'm not really sure what's happening like we kind of finished the term I don't have a new timetable I know my groups need to change they're talking about giving me extra students and I don't know where I'm going to fit them but it will all get worked out hopefully <laughs> and I'll be back into the swing of things before I know and I'm actually really excited to have a full term with these students which will be absolutely awesome because I only got two weeks with them last term by the time I actually got started with the job so that will be amazing I'm just looking around to make sure I haven't forgotten anything but I don't think I have what else do I have oh podcasts what have I been watching sorry that was a really enthusiastic once again um I originally started watching podcasts my first one I ever started watching was The Yarn Hoarder and I loved it I got a bit frustrated because they would, she would be talking about um, American indie dyers and or Canadian and like their local yarn stores and things like that. And it gets a bit frustrating getting excited about yarns and patterns and stuff and then going to look at them and realizing you're going to pay just as much in postage as you are for a skein of yarn. I wasn't overly impressed with that. So I went on a bit of a witch hunt for <laughs> Aussie podcasters for knitting um or crocheting or just anyone that mentioned yarn quite frankly and was Australian I was all over it so now I've got quite a collection of subscriptions for Aussie podcasters under my belt so I'm kind of gravitating towards their recommendations now so Alexandra of Fiberbound recommended um quite a couple that I've been looking at I haven't actually started watching any of them yet but I've written them down one that I have started watching is called Little Monkeys and Me and I've just started watching that I'm only one episode in so I will let you know how it goes but so far I really enjoy it. she's got a really calm voice and not like me she doesn't chat over much unlike me um and she is all about kindness in the community and I think that's amazing like one of the first things she's talking about is how we all might have different opinions and we might not always agree with each other but at the end of the day we should always be kind and I loved that so she's got me hooked already no matter what she goes on to say or make kindness matters so she's reeled me in I'm flopping about in the deck yeah 
hook, line, and sinker. Um, I haven't really had much time to be watching podcasts between last episode and this episode with work and then going camping because I had no reception. I would get it intermittently. Um, and then if I went to actually load something to watch it or to reply to a message, it would just disappear. So yeah, it wasn't much fun. Um, I think it actually took three nights for my little campfire story on Instagram to actually load. Yeah, that was taken on like the second night of camping. and <laughs> I think it loaded on the third or fourth, maybe. Yeah, it was weird. Anyway, I think that might be it from me today, guys. I've got to go get my youngest from childcare. Um, and now that daylight savings is over, I guess we will be running against the dark now at this time of day. Good hour. Thank you so much for joining me today and listening to me blather on and show you all my new pretties. Um, oh, this feels so cathartic. I really needed this. I loved being able to sit here and chat to you guys about my craft and what I've been doing and finally having a finished object to show. It was so nice. Um, don't forget to join the Whip Down Cal 2021 on Instagram. If you've got some languishing whips just sitting around, pick them up, get them finished, join in the fun. Um, until I see you again, I really, really hope it will either be just over two weeks or just under two weeks. It'll have to be back to weekends or I might have to start doing some late night podcasting. Who knows? I will figure it out. I promise. Uh, until then. I hope you are looking after yourselves, physically, of course, but also mentally, emotionally, socially, because all of that is important. And so are you. Bye.